Okay, so now on to the next lesson. So in this lesson here, the outcome that we'll be looking for will be explained that scalar quantities have magnitude and vector quantities have magnitude and direction. Draw and use a vector triangle to determine the resultant of two coplanar vectors. So firstly, some definitions. A scalar is a quantity that has magnitude, which means size, and it could have a unit attached to it too. Basically, it has a dimension. A scalar is represented by a Greek letter or an italicized Roman letter, e.g. X. So, in other words, uh, for a scalar, you're looking at examples like a height of a person. Um, the height of a person is a scalar because it has a size. Obviously, height uh, has a value. And in this case, it has a unit, maybe something like meters or feet. Uh, the weight of a person is a scalar. Um, again, it has a size, it has a value, and um, it has a unit. These are all scalars, and these are examples of scalars with a unit attached to it. Uh, root 2 is a scalar, but it has no unit, so it's just a number, it has a size. You don't need a scalar to have a unit. Scalars are really just real numbers with a possible unit attached. Now, what's a vector? A vector is a quantity which has a magnitude, a size basically, which could have a unit attached, and a direction. So in other words, a vector is a scalar with a direction. And you can use boldface to represent a vector. So bold font X or by putting a little arrow above it, like as shown. So for example, 10 meters due north is a vector, so is four meters per second westerly. These are vectors because they have a size, 10 meters or four meters per second, and they have a direction, north and west. As is 10 meters in a direction 10 degrees above the x-axis. These are all examples of vectors. So how do you represent vectors graphically? Well, shown in this picture here is a vector, and you can see its length, and you can see the direction it's pointing in. What's important to note is this vector is exactly the same as the one you've just seen. So these two vectors are the same. Why are they the same? Well, they have the same length, and they both point in the same direction. So all these vectors I'm showing you are the same. And how do you interpret the vector? Well, let's look at this example here. Uh, the direction the arrow points is the direction of the vector. So if you want to know what the direction is, you just have to look at what way the arrow is pointing. And the length of the vector represents the vector's magnitude or the vector's size. Uh, vectors are used in physics frequently. So they are basic language of physics. For example, you could use vectors to represent location of objects or particles or so on, or what direction something is traveling in and how fast it's traveling in that direction, and so on. So some basic vector algebra now. So shown is the vector x, and now shown is the vector 2x. Exact same direction, just twice the length twice the magnitude. Now shown is the vector a half x, same direction, just half the size. And this is the vector minus x. Same length, but exactly the opposite direction. So going backwards. Now, that's how you can take care of a vector when it's multiplied by a scalar. But what about adding two vectors together? So shown are the vectors x and y. And how can we add these vectors together to make a new vector? Since adding is a basic algebraic operation in maths, we really need to put together a rule for how to add vectors together. So the first step is shown. You draw a line at the end of vector y, where the arrow is, parallel to vector x. Then you draw a line at the end of vector x, parallel 
to vector y. So you have these two lines which will meet and what you do uh, or what you can think is happening is that vector y has been moved so that the bottom of vector y is now at the top of x. Uh, this is fine because it's the same direction because the lines are parallel and as you can see they're the same length. So what you've really done is moved vector y up so that the bottom of vector y or the start of vector y is at the end of vector x. So you have x and y joined together like this. So you can think of x plus y as the green vector shown. And this is called the parallelogram law. And this is how you add two vectors together. Uh, it works very well when the bottom of both vectors are in common, as it is in this case. Uh, if not, you'll just have to move the vectors uh, around, but that isn't something that typically comes up for us.